Good morning, everyone. This is Ebony from Faith to Faith Books, and today I wanted to talk to you. So I was originally going to talk to you about setting um, or creating an effective elevator pitch that would help you sell with your book. But as I was preparing my notes today, I felt the need to change that lesson. And prayerfully, I'll get to go back to it. But for now, I have to be obedient. So I wanted to talk to you about taking a stand uh, for what you believe. And especially when it comes to writing, this is important. It's about much more than maintaining readers or building an uh, email list or even gaining followers. It's about being faithful to the message that God has entrusted you with and realizing that lives depend on it. And here's why standing firm matters. Uh, it's a scripture in the Bible that says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against um, principalities and powers and spiritual <laughs> uh uh, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is a spiritual battle. And the enemy is going to try to silence the truth every opportunity he gets. But you have to be bold. Listen, the stakes are too high to worry about offending someone or losing readers. Your calling should go beyond the opinions of men. It's a scripture in the Bible that says, don't be afraid of their faces. We can't be afraid of how people are looking at us or what they might think about us. We are called to proclaim a message and we have to do that in the face of opposition. I was thinking about Stephen. Stephen had to give a message in the face of opposition. Even though he was being stoned, he had to give a message. And guess what? He saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Now, I'm not going to say that all of us are going to be, you know, uh, that we're going to be physically stoned, but yes, you will have to face persecution. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a scripture, and it talks about hope. Um, it says, if in this life only, you have hope in Christ Jesus, then you are of all men most miserable. We have a hope that goes beyond the grave. Our hope is in Jesus. This is an eternal hope. This is one that's going to last forever. And we have been given this message. We can't be so concerned with what's, with what's temporary. Things that don't last forever. That we forget about what's eternal. Soul. About people's soul. About our soul. Too many people live in this world in an unfit condition for us to be worried about who might be offended by what we write or what we say. Or If God gave you a message to share, it's your responsibility to tell it all without watering it down. Don't worry about who might walk away. We want to be profitable servants. Yes, of course, we want a profit. As authors, as writers, we do want to make money. We want to get a return on our investment. But you know what? God also wants a return on his investment. He's placed something in each of us, and he wants a return on his investment. I don't know who's writing the book, who's working on the book, who's, who's trying to get something out. But if God placed a message in you, if you're supposed to write a book, God wants a return on his investment. Don't be worried about being the first person to write a book. Don't worry about not having enough experience about what people might think of you. God is looking for a return. That means using our gifts, what he's put in us, our writings to make a difference. It's not about readers. It's not about gaining readers or making people happy. It's about his love. We want to hear well done. And we want to help souls. So we, we're not just writing to make money. We're invested in souls. We care about souls. We want people to make it in. Even if we have to face criticism. Listen, 
I'm, I'm, can I just be transparent for a moment? I felt bad about writing a book about um, uh, uh, God because I've heard I've been attacked personally for being a female that talks about the word of God. I've had people tell me personally that I shouldn't do it. And it made me feel some kind of way. And part of me didn't want to do it, but then I knew I had to do it. But then I had to say, okay, who am I going to obey? Am I going to obey God or am I going to obey man? So, I, I mean, I'm not just telling you from, um, from, from just from what I heard. I'm telling you from what I know. We have to be, we have to be willing to obey God. God's message is too important for us to compromise. His message is too important for us to feel like we are not adequate enough. His message is too important for us to put it on the back burner. When God give you a word, we're supposed to say, okay, all right. And a lot of times, you know, God, you know, we, we hear that scripture that says, you know, um, um, uh, like Isaiah says, who shall I send? And and sometimes we can hear the message and we get so excited and we think, you know, here I am, Lord, send me. Here I me, use me, use me. But then God put a book in you or God put something else in you and you're supposed to run with it. But you say, here I am, use me. And God's like, okay, okay, I got it. I just, I just, I'm going to put something your way. But then you don't do it. You feel like you're not qualified. And that's not the message that that that's not that's not that's not what you got when you ask God to send you. Sometimes we can ask God to send us and you know, let's tell God that we're willing to do everything. But do we really mean we're willing to do everything? What if it makes you uncomfortable? Are you willing to do everything? Remember. We have to be bold about what God has put in us. Don't compromise. Bottom line is people need what we have. This message that God put in us, people need it. Truth needs to be told. God chose you to tell. Some readers might walk away, but the ones who stay, they're going to know that you're serious about God, that you're 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 you mean what you say. They're going to know when they go to your books, they can get the truth. They can get someone who tells it like it is, someone who's going to give them the whole truth and nothing but the truth. They're going to know that they can depend on the words. They're going to know that you have studied to show yourself approved unto God. So we're going to stand firm in what God has called us to. I'm not going to try to please everybody. So I just want to encourage you today. I don't know. Um, I actually wasn't even planning on talking about writing a book. I was talking to the writers. But were you called to write a book today? What's been stopping you? What's been stopping you from writing a book? Have you been writing? And have you been veering off on your message? Have you been holding back on what you have to say? What's been, what's been making you hold back? Why haven't you poured out your heart like God has put it in you? Just like God placed it in you, why haven't you, 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 you poured it back out to people? Are you trying to find that bestseller, that, that thing that you know, people are going to just, just flock towards? Or are you trying to be led by the Spirit? Sometimes we can be led by our feelings. We can be led by trends. We can be led by, you know, these gurus and these all of these people who tell you they got it all together, but we're not we're not being spirit led. God Place something in all of us. And he's looking for a return on his investment. Again, too many people are leaving this world in an unfit condition. 
And who are we? Who are we to have the words of truth and not share? Who are we to hold back on what God has put in us? We do not want to be that wicked, unprofitable servant who took what he had and hid it in the ground. We want to be the one who went out and made an investment. It's not just about writing a book. Sometimes you need to get out and speak for people. Don't you know all of us are called to be witnesses? Yeah. The Bible says after that you receive the Holy Ghost, you should have power. We, we, you know, in the Bible says you should become witnesses. We got power to witness. You get the Holy Ghost and power, you should be witnesses. You should be worried about what people might say. Too many people. Too many people need God. So, stay encouraged and remember, the world needs your voice. Don't compromise.